Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for deciding I don't want a future relationship with my ex after he cheated on me. I'm 17, and I was in a relationship with Zach, who's 24, for about 3 or 4 months. Before we started dating, we had known each other for about 7 to 8 months. I first met Zach after I moved in with my mom, who lives with her boyfriend. When I met him, Zach was in a two and a half year relationship with his ex, and they were living together. I had moved in with my mom after finishing high school, because things at home with my dad were getting worse, and I needed a fresh start. In those early days, we all used to hang out together as a group, going to our local climbing gym or grabbing a meal afterward. At that point, Zach and I considered each other really good friends. He had a girlfriend, and I'm not the type of person who crosses those boundaries or tries to steal someone's man. Plus, Zach wasn't even my usual type. My previous boyfriend was into music, shows, and concerts, and he would often drag me along with him. He was into the alternative scene, drinking, smoking, skating, and all that. He was thin, with curly hair that he would sometimes dye. He had this great 90s 2000s style, and was an amazing artist. We came from pretty similar backgrounds, with the only real difference being that his family was more stable than mine when we were growing up. Zach, on the other hand, was into completely different things. He loved working on cars and he used to play hockey in high school. He had attended an international boarding school around the same age I was when I met him, so his background and upbringing were completely different from what I was used to. While I am an active person, I mainly do it for leisure. However, when it comes to sports, I can get pretty competitive. I'm naturally a shy person, but when I get more comfortable around people, I never shut up. Zach, on the other hand, is more confident and outgoing than I am. He's really into racing, and is a huge nerd when it comes to coding and programming. I know absolutely nothing about computers, and have probably spent around 48 hours total on one in my entire life. To me, computers are like magic, but to Zach, they're second nature. He's the kind of person who knows everything you ever need to know about anything to do with PCs, our relationship built slowly over time. Eventually, my mom and her boyfriend told me that Zach would be staying with us because he and his girlfriend were breaking up. Yes, I thought he was fractive. He's 6'2", with soft brown shoulder-length hair, beautiful green eyes, and a lean build. But I never thought things between us would end up the way they did. Over the course of those six months, we spent every day together, growing closer and feeling more comfortable and open with each other. I got more into racing, and we'd spend almost all of our time together learning about cars or watching races in Europe. He became my best friend. Toward the end of our friendship, we started going on what we called friend dates. He took me to this outdoor event called Cars and Coffee, and afterward we went to play pool at a coffee shop. After that day, we were physically inseparable. I could literally feel and see the chemistry between us, and it felt like part of me was changed forever. We'd been starting to get more comfortable with cuddling and massaging each other, and then one night, it just happened. The tension between us had been building and building, until we couldn't fight it anymore and gave in. Zach then started talking to me about our relationship, and how we'd deal with the stigma of our age gap. More importantly, he wondered how we'd eventually tell my mom. We decided to keep our relationship secret for a while, just to feel things out between us. But one morning, while we were asleep cuddling in his room, my mom came up to my room to tell me she loved me before she went to work but couldn't find me there. The whole house started searching for me while I was hiding in Zach's closet, naked and wrapped in a blanket. My mom's boyfriend eventually found me, and he promptly kicked Zach out. Since then, we've been trying to navigate our relationship, but it's been hard for both of us. Zach works for his brother's company, so they haven't completely cut him off. Things are still professional and cordial between them. He's been staying in hotels while he looks for an apartment or someone to room with, and this has been going on for the better part of a month. I know it's not feasible to live in a hotel long term, and I've been encouraging him to reach out and find someone to stay with. Last weekend, Zach went to work grid for the racing group he's part of. He was hours away, working in the heat all day. I'm not usually crazy about how timely he is when he replies to me, especially if he's out working so I wasn't too worried when I didn't hear from him that weekend. I just chalked it up to him being busy and tired. Monday came and went with nothing. Then Tuesday came by, and he said he needed to talk to me. I had already suspected that he wanted to break up, 
based on a conversation we had the week before, so I was prepared for him to just end things. But I was so wrong. In September, I'm moving to Korea on a scholarship from a prestigious school. The company my mom's boyfriend works for wants to send him there as an executive, and they're willing to pay for my family to move and cover my tuition. Eventually, things between Zach and me would have to end, and I wanted that to happen before I was already in Korea. I'd even mentioned the idea of us gradually weaning off our relationship so that when the time came for me to leave, we wouldn't be heartbroken or have lingering feelings holding us back from new opportunities. So, when Zach didn't reply to me on Tuesday after I said okay, I texted him the next day, saying that I was off work and that if he was free, we could find a time that worked for both of us to talk. He read the message but didn't say anything, so I assumed that meant no. Thursday rolled around, and I was surprised when Zach woke me up by kissing my forehead caressing my face and playing with my hair. Every morning he grabs the company truck and other supplies, so I wasn't shocked to see him. We said good morning and talked about why I had passed out on the couch and how his morning had been. Then, while still holding my face and crouching in front of me, he said that we had to talk and that I was going to hate the conversation we needed to have. I told him I already knew, then closed my eyes and rolled back over. He sat there for a while, still playing with my hair before he got up to leave, but before he walked out the door, he stopped to caress my face in his hand one last time. Still, after that, there was no communication from him. Friday rolled around, and he finally told me that he was ready to talk that night after he got off work. Can you guess what happened? He didn't say anything to me and didn't come home to pick up his car to drop off the company supplies, truck, or trailer. So around 3 a.m. I called him, partly out of concern and partly to investigate his strange behavior. In my mind he was either dead in a ditch or at some girl's house, there was no other possible explanation. He didn't answer until 20 minutes later, and I just told him that I'd probably called him in my sleep and told him to go back to bed. On Saturday, Zach finally told me that he was ready to talk whenever I was available. So, through some planning, we agreed that 6 p.m. would be the perfect time to have the conversation. He started by saying that he loved me, that I exhibited all the traits of his ideal partner, and that even though we were perfect for each other, we couldn't be together. He said it was because he felt like I hadn't learned the lessons in life that I needed to learn, lessons that come with age and experience. He said these were things I couldn't be taught or go through with my romantic partner at such an early stage in my adulthood, and that I needed to learn them on my own. He said I needed to find more independence and confidence before we could have a healthy relationship. I agree, it's something we've discussed before and I completely understand where he's coming from. But he said that he had a conversation with someone he trusted and had known for a long time, and that brought some things and feelings to light. He said someone he trusts with so much disdain it hurt the most out of this whole situation, just because I wasn't expecting it, so it hit me 1,000x times harder than I think a fragment of a sentence should. I did the obvious and asked who he had talked to. He tells me it's an old friend. I asked about why he didn't pick up his car last night and where he kept the work trailer. He told me that he drove it to where he was staying. I ask who he's staying with because I know that he couldn't possibly fit into a hotel parking lot. He tells me that it's just a friend and that he's been staying with them since Tuesday. He backtracks his story after I press for more details and says that he's only known her for four days. You trust someone you just met four days ago more than your girlfriend, someone you've known and lived with for almost a year? That question finally made him go quiet. After some back and forth about him not telling me what was going on, my mom called me I pick up and tell her what's going on, and she says, did he finally move in with Grace? Immediately, I started prying her for answers and information. She told me that on Monday he told her about his plans to move in with his brother's best friend's daughter while they were out working. My mom's boyfriend had said that, apparently, she had made moves on him while he was working for her dad's company and training her in the warehouse. At the time he was with his ex, so things between them were promptly shut down and never reopened. I hung up after hearing that and called him. This is what I said verbatim, you don't have to answer if you don't want to but just know that your silence tells me everything I need to know, if you're honest with me, this whole situation could get exponentially better for you, but if you lie to me, just know there's no coming back, are you staying with Robert's daughter Grace? Total silence. I laugh and then hang up. After about 45 minutes to an hour, he knocked on my bedroom door while I was on the phone. I come out and we talk about things. He still won't tell me what's going on. 
I told him we were not going to keep going around in circles, and that our conversation was over if this was the direction it was staying in. He asked me if there would ever be a chance that we could get back together in a couple of years. If he had communicated what he was going through and planning to do, I would have considered it, but now. I feel like I don't even know who he is, I would have for the person I grew to love and trust wholeheartedly, but now. I don't know who you are, so no, there's no chance of a relationship or even a friendship. I'm a person who says how they feel, and I don't hold back. I told him that lying to me and making me have to pull teeth to find things out from my mom and her boyfriend made me see who he truly is. When he was confronted, he still couldn't even muster up the courage to tell me the truth. I called him spineless because you can't use the excuse of I'm doing this, because I love you and self-sabotaging my life, because I don't know what else to do. You can't sit there and tell me you're doing this, because you care about me and that it's not easy for you to do and clearly it's pretty fucking easy for you to ignore me start a relationship with someone else, and still lie to me to my face. He thinks I'm being insensitive and harsh on him because of his situation. And that he genuinely was lost, trying to find a way to tell me what was going on, without killing my heart and love for him. Wrong approach. At one point, he even got mad at me for getting mad at him. After basically going radio silent for a week, then immediately getting told that my boyfriend is banging some chick, but he won't tell me who it is or, truthfully, how long it's been going on, so I have to go digging around for information. Just because he's going behind my back and not even being honest, just saying things about me and how much he tried and wanted to tell me but still hasn't and probably won't ever tell me. Yes, I'm more than mad right now. I'm livid. You have no right to be mad at me right now. He just kept saying that it wasn't a good show of character on his part but I told him that I thought it was a good thing he showed me his true character. It's not about what you say, it's about your actions and what choices you made that led you there in the first place. So yes, I'll never judge your situation, but I will judge you for how you handled it. I feel taken advantage of and naive for believing him when he said that I'm the woman he wants to wake up next to for the rest of his life. He'd do anything and everything for us, and he wanted to build something for us. How can you say all of those things to me? hold me, and make me feel things I've never felt for someone, just to then cheat on me and ditch me when it's convenient for you. I told him to be honest with me or face the consequences. He chose not to be. In my eyes what he did to me was beyond repairable for a future relationship. Should I give it some time and try and make things up with him? Am I just freshly hurt and not seeing things from the correct perspective? In the U.S., the state where I live, the age of consent is 16. I don't want people to comment that he's a P30 or anything of that nature. What we had was completely legal and consensual.